All right, welcome back to a really special spring morning. It's just rained last night. It's been super wet. Everything is perking up, it's growing awesome. So I'm gonna give you a quick, short tour. What's going on here at the Hillside Garden spring 2023? So one thing I love about the springtime is how everything is just growing so fast. Now these are some sunflowers, a couple of different varieties. You can kind of see the tags in the background there. Um, just getting them outside, getting them acclimated, kind of harden them off. It's time this time of year to really start bringing your things outdoors, which is amazing because I've been spending so much time indoors with just the grow lights and, you know, the water cycles and, you know, keeping everything moist and humid and everything like that it just gets really stressing at a certain point. It's time to just get stuff outside and let nature take care of it, which is amazing. Now, I also got this rose this year. Now, I've never been a rose person, but that color just kind of blew me away. I do kind of want to kind of train it here on the porch to climb up this trellis, which I think might be kind of cool to have a lot of uh, roses kind of like cascading down the trellis. But that is uh, for a summertime project, just still just brandly new transplanted. Now, something else I like to do is make more plants. Now, this is just the uh, stone crop. It grows pretty much wild on the uh, rock wall I have behind my house, which I'll show you. And in the spring, it's a great time, guys, if you know what you're looking for, to go around and pick up seedlings, uh, make divisions, make cuttings. You can make more and more plants. Uh, shameless plug, there's a big farmer's market uh, plant sale coming up here in a couple weeks. So I'm propagating like crazy to get everything I possibly can ready for that eventual sale. Uh, over here, you can kind of see some of the bearded irises are really starting to bloom. The purple with the yellow, the contrast you can see right there. Uh, this year, the yellows really aren't blooming that much. It's really just the purples. So hopefully they do kind of balance out. It is a pretty good uh, color scheme there. Now, like I mentioned, these are just some more seedlings. I've kind of pulled out of the uh, flower bed, some columbines, some flowers, some perennials, some echinaceas, et cetera, et cetera. Here's just some more seedlings, nothing really too exciting. Although the thyme, the culinary herb, is starting to sprout. So that's what that looks like right there. Okay, moving over here. Now this is a just a cold frame. I've showed you this before. Uh, it's actually growing on my porch now because uh, I had to really re, uh, repurpose and reutilize the space this was occupying. So now I have my cold sensitive things like tomatoes and dahlias growing in there, which I can give you a shot of that. All right, so here's a look inside the cold frame. They're all doing very healthy. Some nasturtiums over here, which are perking up awesome. All these seed grown dahlias right here. Some really sad tomato plants that got really almost frosted out. I kind of missed those one night, but they're recovering. And some peppers, uh, they're a little pale right here. That's actually a result of overwatering. They got really soaked. So uh, basically the plants can't breathe because the uh, roots get saturated. So they are uh, definitely in recovery from that. Now, moving across here to the flower bed, it's kind of just a walking tour today, guys. Now this right here, these are Virginia spiderwort. It's a wildflower, but it grows well in moist shade. However, this uh, just kind of got volunteered here. I'm not sure how it spread from uh, another planting I made. Um, it's doing quite well. It absolutely attracts bumblebees like crazy. So it's very, very beneficial for pollinators. One of my favorite flowers in the spring are peonies. And this plant here is just absolutely flush with buds. It'll be blooming out here very soon. I cannot wait. And one thing, gosh, the sun feels so good. I'm on my back right now. The birds are chirping. It's, it's a great day to be outside. It has been so cold and dreary lately. So this is definitely, definitely a treat. Uh, these are some dahlias right here. These were grown from seed years ago. Uh, they're coming back up. Everyone says you need to dig up your dahlias in zone 6B, 7A, but I've never have. And they grow four to five feet tall every year, put on a profuse amount of flowers. As long as you heavily mulch and take care of your, uh, your plants, I don't really believe you need to dig them up. That uh, is that critical, but maybe I'm just been lucky. I don't know. Here's another uh, peony. It's a little bud about to pop open right there. The nice little white color on that. And I mean, just like they're here, this was a row of these were uh, some daffodils, some miniature daffodils, and they're fading out. So as they're fading out, more things are taking their place, like these uh, calla lilies right here. So plant for succession in your gardens, guys. Remember, some things bloom early in the spring, then you have to have your mid-season, late season, you know, all season long. Think of the colors and the progression of how your flower beds are going to evolve, because like I mentioned, as these, uh, as these peonies here eventually will flower and fade out, the dahlias here, 
and also the calla lilies down here are going to start taking their spot. Uh, yarrow here, this is a basically an invasive weed at this point. I do my best to kind of control it. It is beneficial for uh, medicinal reasons. It has a lot of uh, pollinator friendly. However, it does spread, I mean, crazy. So if you don't really want yarrow, probably not a good idea to plant it unless you're fighting it. It spreads so fast through its roots. Anyways, moving on. Some more of the Virginia spiderwort, which is where I want it to be at. Of course, it's a dark, kind of shaded, moist area, along with some baby peony seedlings that will be uh, basically transplanted out to their future home whenever they get a little bit bigger. But right now, it's kind of a nursery situation right here for them. Uh, another thing I really focus on this year, guys, with uh, pollinators, these are some mason bee houses. Um, I don't really see many active right now, but you can kind of see down here where the previous season, they actually made the, uh, the, the, uh, the tubes, they filled them up with the, uh, with the babies and they've actually escaped right there. You can see where they've kind of got their way out of the uh, mud uh, blockage right there. So they are out and about somewhere doing some good stuff for the landscape, hopefully making more babies and increasing the pollinator population. Now, in my last video, I showed you about the shade loving plants. This is probably a better depiction because that day was really sunny. So it may have given some people some, uh, some misgivings uh, about shade loving plants. But like this area right here, guys, this is a nice secluded little shady spot right here. So definitely check that video out. I won't spend a lot of time on that because I did make a full video on that. But this hosta here, as I swear doubled in size since we had all this rain lately, uh, it is amazing. <laughs> it's taking up so much space. So definitely, definitely plant some hostas if you have a moist, uh, shaded area. They do fill in the area greatly and they put a profuse amount of leaves and uh, different colors. So definitely something very, very beneficial for the landscape. I don't know if I've ever showed you this before, guys, but I'm not sure how this happened, but this is actually right along the, uh, the steps here going up to the backyard, which we'll get there. But however, check this out. This little hosta, it's just kind of growing right here. It's a little crack. Um, at one point, I think I tried to actually move this years ago and I thought I killed it. But you know what? It came back, I guess, enough of the roots survived that I didn't destroy. And so, you know what? It wants to be there. I'll let it be there. Not a big deal. So, moving on to this section here. Now, this is more of a wildflower, kind of a native area. I'm leaving it for a pollinator kind of, uh, kind of area. And it's a wild planting. Put a bunch of wildflower seeds up here. They may or may not sprout. I'm not sure yet. It's still early in the spring. But... Definitely, guys, leave a little bit of wild space in your landscape if possible. Uh, not only is this on a hillside, as you can tell, this is the hillside garden channel, but this, uh, where it comes off the backyard down this slope, this uh, wild area is going to help prevent erosion. It's going to help prevent, uh, you know, soil runoff. It's going to keep a lot of things happy. But um, what, like I'm saying, it's, it's very, 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 very beneficial for the native pollinators. There's tons of uh, bugs back here that are beneficial. I've seen praying mantis i've seen toads even back here hanging out so yes if you are able to leave a little spot of wilderness even if it's just a little bank in your backyard for the wildlife so moving along here this is just a sneak preview this is uh, some more of the spider wart that i've dug up like i mentioned i have been digging up plants getting ready for the sale so um go with that here's some hellebore seedlings that i dug up made a video on that check that one out if you want to see the best way possible to multiply hellebores via seedlings, definitely give that a shot. So let me go ahead and over here and show you what else is growing on the other side of the house. Yeah, so it might've been a quite a while, honestly, since I've showed anyone anything growing on this side of the house. It's been kind of a work in progress uh, before I start again, another Mason Bee house right here. And these are actually brand new. See where they're capped off right there. So those definitely have some, uh, some little babies in there, which will be developing and coming out here about six weeks or so to uh, join the party here in the backyard. But right here, like I said, now this is a shady kind of damp area. I've tried to experiment this year with growing some new carrots. Now this is an experimental variety. I actually got part of a, uh, a seed trial. So I'm supposed to grow these out and kind of report back, uh, you know, the progress, et cetera, et cetera, as was part of an agreement to get some some free gardening supplies via the company is kind of a uh, both beneficial uh, situation there. But there are some more carrot seedlings that need to be thinned out a little bit, but they're starting to put on their leaves there. Now here's a golden raspberry bought from uh, just a big box store. I always kind of wanted to try them out. This one's doing great. This one did not grow. However, 
Uh, I think it's still actually alive via the rootstock, so maybe it'll spin out some uh, some new growth here eventually from the uh, from the roots. Now here's a strawberry. I did not plant this one. This was a uh, actually here's another one right here. Honestly, uh, years ago there was the strawberries here, and they were all torn out because they were just destroyed by deer and slugs and everything. But I guess somehow along the way, some of the runners may have survived or re retaken this space back, so I'm letting them grow. Not a big deal. Not a bad thing to have some strawberries growing, especially for free, ones you didn't have to plant. Uh, these are arugula seedlings coming up just fine. They're just babies, so not really much to show. Now this little section here is my spinach bed. Now this is just your regular spinach. There's Savoy spinach, perpetual spinach, and I want to say even some chard in here, which are all members of the spinach and or beet family, so definitely going to ramp up the edible leafy greens production this year they're doing fantastic this rain like i mentioned has made everything just day and night you guys it was so hot and dry uh recently but now with the rain everything is just perked up and it's healthy green and vibrant and that soil just looks so much darker when it's wet you know you see that in your garden a lot whenever you finally get you know the soil gets wet it just looks so much darker and more healthy uh as a canna lily i think this is actually from a seed grown i just kind of let it go but it's fine. Uh, this little clematis back here, this vine, trying to get it to grow up this uh, this trellis. It's a beautiful color. Love that. Here's some wild blueberries that I grew from seed. Tons of videos on how to do that. But yeah, these are the uh, the uh, native wild uh, blueberries, the low bush variety. Uh, they're doing quite healthy. They're transplanted out. They should do fine in this little section here. Moving on over here. And I'm sorry, guys, I just have so much to show you, so I'm going fast. If you really want to have any uh, more details on anything I'm growing here, just drop me a comment down below. I'll be more than happy to walk you through it or maybe make a video specifically on just one particular topic that you maybe have, have the most questions about. Uh, here are some more lettuces grown in this container. Uh, they are absolutely perking up and doing amazing since this rain, which is, that is just, I, I can't imagine guys, it has been so hot and so dry for April. It has just been ridiculous. We're now back to normal temperatures with lots of rain and everything is responding so, so well to it. But look at those colors. So if you grow lettuce, guys, there are literally hundreds of varieties of lettuce. Don't just grow green iceberg lettuce. A, there's no flavor, there's no taste, there's really no nutrition. Grow lettuce of different colors. Even if it's just the aesthetic look in your salad bowl. I mean, just look at those leaves. Why would you want a plain, pale, green iceberg lettuce when you can have something as beautiful as these lettuce leaves right here? So let's go ahead to the backyard and show you where some major changes have been taking place. If you've been watching this channel for any time whatsoever, you're gonna be amazed at just how different things look and how much things have changed since last year. Here's just another quick look. These are some columbines in my little nature strip right here. Look how beautiful those flowers are. Just see how the sun just shines on this little hillside in the early morning. All those little native yellow flowers in the background. That's what you need to do, guys. That's what it's all about. Keeping your landscape as a wild managed landscape full of beneficials for us pollinators, insects, everything all about all around. And your gardens, your flowers, your vegetables, your fruit trees, everything will respond and do so much better because of places like this. Okay, so guys, walking up the stairs here to the backyard. I want to show you something really cool. Check this out right here. What is that? That is actually a pomegranate. Yes, the ones I grew from seed. Made a video about that. Definitely check that one out. They're not supposed to overwinter here. I grew several in containers, several in the ground. This is the only one that made it. It was heavily, heavily mulched with, I'd probably say, maybe six to eight inches of leaves and grass clippings. So if you're going to try to overwinter some pomegranates, granted, it may die back to the ground but it will survive if you mulch it enough here's another another uh, peony right here from seed that i grew so moving along if you haven't seen the hillside garden in a long time you'll notice this is a brand new fence unfortunately a big big wind storm like 70 mile an hour winds finally took out my existing fence got a new one built and you know what we're going through the gate which is also a new feature to the hillside backyard but check this out guys look how green this grass is Everything is amazing, doing wonderful. Once again, I need to show you some of the pollinator houses. Now, this is a mason bee house. I made a short actually about the, uh, when I showed the mason bees in action. Right now they're probably out buzzing around doing some bee things, but that's where they're putting their, uh, their eggs for uh, future, uh, you know, prosperity. 
a little clematis vine here now with getting this fence built and this new gate and some stuff there i used to have such bad deer pressure back here guys and i still do but it's not nearly as bad i think it's kind of deterred a little bit of their travels so some of the stuff back here is actually growing better than it has in the past a uh, little azalea bush is kind of past its prime but it's doing quite well um you kind of see here the uh object in the back here which is a bee house which there's nothing in it just yet it's just a nuke colony i'm trying to attempt to get some uh, some wild bees not really sure how it's going to work out if it will work out at all so if you have any advice on how to kind of bring some uh some wild bees or colonate an actual beehive uh without having to spend hundreds of dollars to import bees uh let me know i've uh, tried the lemongrass oil thing nothing's worked as of yet but you know it's okay now this rock wall which is a borders my neighbor's yard this project has uh, really started to kind of come together. A long time ago, I planted a bunch of seedlings, some trees and some bushes. I wanted to kind of block this out and kind of make a living wall, which will block out the backyard of the neighbor here. And I think this year, guys, it's really starting to come together. Things are growing into one another. Here's a ginkgo tree that was from seed as well. Some, some Osage orange, which has big spikes, which helps keep the deer away. In my experience, here's a lilac bush, another ginkgo, and you can see there's some bamboo actually kind of coming out here which i planted on purpose because it's going to fill in but as long as you mow it down and keep it within its boundaries bamboo can be controlled you just got to stay on top of it so i know a lot of people absolutely despise bamboo and that's fine if you don't want to grow it plant something else over here some more of my irises now this is a beautiful white bearded iris right here check out those beautiful colors a little yellow tongue on them as well amazing and this little dark colored one here which I really, really like, which I wish I had a lot more of these. So I definitely needed to kind of divide this up. This is one of my favorite irises so far. So definitely, 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 definitely want more of those. Another variety of bamboo growing back in this corner, which the plan is to basically let it just kind of colonize this whole back section of the yard here, uh, which actually had another layer of deer deterrent as they actually kind of use this corridor back here before the fence got built. This was their travel area. So now there's a fence and there's bamboo, it will hopefully deter the deer from utilizing this as a travel way and they can go someplace else, which is fine. I don't want to kill the deer. I just don't want them destroying all of my landscaping, which we can all relate to. Some more bushes, nothing really too exciting, but here we go, guys. We're showing you the final, the final project. Now, this used to be a pallet garden. I've showed you that before. Uh, during COVID, I actually got bored and I had a bunch of uh, pallets donated. So I made a pallet fence garden. But all good things must come to an end. Those eventually kind of rotted out and died and kind of had to get rid of them, looking kind of shabby. So now I have the deer netting in the garden. Uh, you can see these big poles here. Some of these are wooden stakes, some are T-post. But this heavy-duty nylon deer fencing has definitely worked out so far. Knock on wood, no deer have been inside. I've actually seen deer through the house, you know, looking out the window, travel through the backyard, look at the fence and keep walking. So maybe they're finally deterred enough that they're not going to try to uh, try to jump over anything. There's plenty of other things for them to worry about besides jumping into this garden. Now, I don't really don't want to climb through here because it's a obstacle, but my potatoes are coming up right through here. First year I've tried to grow Kennebec uh, to, uh, potatoes. So that would be a good experiment. They've uh, heard they do very well in this area. I've transplanted my blueberries from a horrible spot they were kind of located in to now a more uh, full sun area. Uh, they're doing quite well. They're actually perking up quite a bit. They were looking very, very sad. Moving along here um, from this angle, I got some tomatoes, which you can see are just in these little stakes. These are all grown from seed. I'll do a special video on the tomato varieties, which they are. There's at least 10 different heirloom varieties. So I will uh, definitely keep you guys informed on that as they progress, uh, probably more towards the summer as the fruit develop. But just so you know, there's a lot of heirloom uh, rare varieties of tomatoes in this garden this year, guys. Now moving back into this section here on the ground. Now this is an in-ground experimental area. There are some onions, some shallots, some asparagus from seed. And these big guys here, these are actually elephant garlic doing quite well. We'll do a harvest video on those very soon. This raised bed in the background is another bed of heirloom garlic. These are uh, French uh, heirloom. I'm not sure right off the top of my head the actual name, but they are doing fantastic. They're starting to fill out. They're very, 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 very healthy. 
This bed you see here, this is actually brand new this year. In addition, uh, these are some sweet peppers, which uh, I've actually thought ahead and put stakes down for once because do it now as opposed to when the plants are growing. Pro tip, it's just a lot easier. Uh, I would say I'm gonna do it. I never get around to it this year. Finally did, so that's awesome. Now right here, you can kind of tell these are artichokes. They are from seed. They are purple uh, Italian artichokes, heirlooms. So definitely be something different than the traditional green globe artichoke. Give those a shot. And this bed here last year, uh, pretty much got infested with some, some pests. So I had to tear everything out, refurbish the soil, but it's actually recovering quite well. Here are some thyme that um, I showed you the seedlings. This is the, what the full grown plant will look like. Culinary thyme, that smells amazing by the way. Using it in cooking uh, yesterday was fantastic. Uh, so a little bit of potatoes. Here's a random asparagus that is just uh, kind of growing up through there. I'm not sure how that got there, a seed or, or something. I, I, don't, I don't know at this point. Hard to keep track, there's so many plants. Uh, this bed here, um, these are some more potatoes. These are fingerling varieties with some mustard greens, some leafy greens in the, uh, the foreground there. And in the back, this is actually a bed of flowers. Yes, why am I growing an entire bed of flowers in a vegetable garden? Well, because they're edible flowers, guys. And a uh, shameless plug here, I've actually started developing into uh, an actual legitimate business. There are several restaurants that I'm actually specializing in selling edible flowers to, which I'll do a tons of videos on that this summer as I kind of get more and more uh, into it and kind of get more up to speed. But yes, your, your pansies, your violets, your violas, uh, your wild blue violets you find growing here wild in the uh, just in your yard sometimes as long as you're not using chemicals at all or pesticides they're safe and very very good for garnishes and for eating just in general so there you go guys here's a quick little tour i kind of got long-winded but guys there's just so many plants for me to describe this plant this could go on for hours if i really 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 wanted to but that's the best i can do for right now hope you enjoy checking out this quick early spring tour of the hillside gardens more and more and more to come guys this is just the tip of the iceberg we're in for a great long growing season please stick around consider giving this video a thumbs up subscribe so you don't miss any future content here at the hillside gardens and guys i'll see you next time get outside get growing and be good Bye bye